Look in my eyes for my mind state. I'm on the grind 25, eh? Money on my mind, that's how I play. If you got it now, this what I say. Hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Make it up, hold up, hold up, uh, yeah. I'm on the move, I'm on the move. They see your boots and say not again. To the point that if it when I drop a pen, by the time you see it, I get out again. Yo, the party starts when I show up. Roll up, all glowed up. Grown up on the roads, bruh. Some of the code and gold dust, yeah. Brown bag legend when it's all cash uh, And round here second is the dog's ass uh, My grind is simply impeccable Pick it up a couple decibels You should resemble professionals Maybe you should lead this to the professionals yeah. Cooking up like I'm gourmet Then mode then I board planes uh, Eat good every tour date uh, Like a black Anthony Bourdain AZ out the Norway uh, Get it clear like a 4K uh, Killing mics is my forte One on one a fatal four way uh, All day they cannot see me uh, Never scared so I talk We ballin', highlights on ESPN Hardest worker up in any room you ever catch me in Cheer. Look in my eyes for my mind state I'm on the grind 25, eh? Money on my mind, that's how I play If you got it now, this what I say Very busy individuals. They got a show going on tonight. They're part of the fam tour. This is mid. How, how, how many shows are y'all in now? Three fourths. Three fourths. Yeah, we're three fourths of the way. It's almost over. Uh, we got Ooh. just some Florida shows and then New Orleans at the end. And that's Ooh. it. So we got about three more. Yeah. Three, three more. Three, two. Okay. Okay. Like so, um, and this isn't even my guest that I scheduled this evening. So, this is episode 15. This is going to be us. A teasy table more Swerve City podcast. Type yeah. Of. So you're going to run point on this one, my brother. That's why I'm back here in the back. Yo. So I'm riding back. What's Rosa up, Parks. everybody, man? You know, my, my phone comped out. So you usually see me with the phone. I ain't got it. You know, everybody else holding down my phone went out out of service. So I'll be getting one next week. But episode 15, man. You know, Teasy's Table, Swerve City podcast edition. I have some wonderful guests here with me, three MCs that, you know, I truly respect not only for, they, for what they pen, for what they do. For what they're bringing to the culture, I'm gonna start left to right. I'm gonna introduce first Mickey, and Mickey Fax over there. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mickey. It's Mickey. Uh, in the middle, my man Alfred Banks over here. What's good, my G? What's the word? How you guys feeling, man? Everything's mm. good, man. Copacetic, man. I'm moving, man. Last but not least, my big bro, the big homie Mega Ran. What's popping, man? Yo, what's good, everybody? It's good to be here. Absolutely, man. Sure. We've been trying to get this together, man, me and you, for a minute, man. We've been talking about this for a minute, and, so uh, he was like, finally. Finally, we're here. He's like, yo, man, got to get on the pod. like, yo, man, let's just get our schedules together. A couple times you've been down in Orlando, we haven't been able to get it, but luckily, you know, thank God, God is good, you're able to come here. And I'm glad it worked out. It's a perfect timing for us. Absolutely. All in due timing. Absolutely. You know, you know God will make mistakes, man. Absolutely. So first, man, tell me a little bit about this tour, man. Go before I start with oh, you, man. How actually, you? first and foremost, mm-hmm. before we go into it, this is a really, like, really sad day. It just happened, man. Like, we just lost Juice World. Yes, morning, indeed. Man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah um, 21 years old. Yeah, man, that's, that's, ins- that's, that's, that's terrible. Insane. So, like, we're losing more and more young, talented artists at younger ages right now. And I'm pretty sure we're going to loop back into this at some point in the conversation, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's only right that we shout that out. For sure. This Absolutely. is episode, episode 15. Shout out Juice World. Recipes, Juice R.I.P., World. man. R.I.P. Juice World. Absolutely, man. All right. Um, so, uh, you know, moving in, man, you guys been on this tour. I mean, you guys say you're three-fourths away there. Tell me a little bit about the tour, man. How you guys, mm-hmm. what's the experiences? Tell me some of the dates you guys have uh, been at. Uh, we started in Boston the day after Thanksgiving. So, um, Something that y'all probably know a lot about is our, that schedules can be so hectic and sometimes, you know, holidays, like, sometimes entertainment doesn't take a holiday, you know what I'm saying? Nope. It's like people always want to be entertained. They want music, they want things, they want shows, they want whatever they like. So we started booking, working on the tour and, and the best available time for all of us was right after Thanksgiving. So the day after, like Thanksgiving night, I had to finish my turkey and then get on a flight and come to the East Coast to meet these brothers so that we could start uh, the run. 
in Boston. But actually, I flew to New York, and then I met with Mick, and then, yo, why are you giving me the extreme <laughs> close-up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Don't, 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 hey, yo. Don't, uh, don't yo. scare off your, your IG Live people. They're like, yo. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, I, uh, I, I met up with Mick, and... Um, he thought it was the first time we met, but we actually had met before that. <laughs> the entertainment <laughs> brain. Like, funny story. <laughs> the, like you said, the brain. entertainment brain, uh, it works differently. <sighs> Mickey was, I, I'll get into that story only if they ask, but we had an interesting beginning back in maybe 2009. 2009. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like, Mick just kind of, you know. But anyway, um, so Alfred yeah, Banks Nick, what you do? Wait, I wanna is know. the... Uh, you know what? We might as well talk about it. Are we going into it right <laughs> now? Are we, let's, let's are we just, going into this right now? Right now. We can't leave Pat. no blank spaces. Because all I'm going to think about is... I You're right. What you do, man. Okay, so <laughs> Mickey, Mickey in 2009 came out to Phoenix where I, was, I had just moved um, and played a show. The show didn't happen for whatever reason. So what happened was... Um, the, the guy who promoted it knew about me and was like, yo, it would be really dope if Mickey and Mega did a song together. And this is 2009. And so he gets in his car with Mick. I, I guess he bought him a couple bottles of Grand Marnier along the way. Uh, that's Mickey's drink of choice. And um, Mick got a little, <laughs> a little light, a little, a little cross-faded. But in the, mean, cross in the meantime, <laughs> he was... He was like rapping nonstop. Like Mickey is a rap savant, I think, to me. Absolutely, without a doubt, in the Absolutely. best way possible. Absolutely. Easily, he's a bar savant. Like the dude is just a wordsmith to the to the umpteenth degree, and like remembers so many raps. So he's in the car with the promoter guy, and Mickey's in the back seat or whatever, just rapping. And this dude's like, "Yo, you hear him? You hear him? Yo, he's just barring out nonstop." And I was like, "All right, bring him to the studio." So he brings it to the studio. I didn't know that there was Grand Marnier involved <laughs> in this bar session. So he pulls up to my crib, skirt, and uh, opens up the door, skirt, <laughs> and and then he's like, "Yo, help me get Mickey out the car." And I was like, <laughs> "You need help? Wait, this is Mick, Mickey can't walk. Like I didn't know this. I didn't know that he had a thing where he couldn't walk. No, man, he drunk. Help me!" And he's like stumbling out of the car into my house, and I help him up the stairs. He sits down, and I was like. Oh hi, I'm I'm Mega Ren. <laughs> so that's how we met. But it gets better because then Mickey says, "Yo, uh, where's the bathroom?" <laughs> and I had to think about this because I know he's wasted. So I'm like, do I send him into like the private master bath or do I send him into the the, the public bathroom? I gotta send him to the public bathroom. It's right there, man. And then the moment he gets out the room, I hear. <laughs> Destroys the bathroom. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> woo! Best part. That first impression. Best man. part, though. Yeah, first, first impression was a mug. And then he comes in, he comes back, like, he's all cleaned up, and he's like, yo, give me five minutes to take a nap. And I was like, okay. <laughs> We're playing beast the whole time. He just passes out five minutes. This man, I guess, is a superhero because <laughs> at about four minutes and 30 seconds, Jesus. this dude wakes up. Yo, where the beats at? Let's go. Let's write. Let's go. Ah. And drops a verse the very same night. Like, after all this, drops a fire verse. <laughs> like I said, this dude is like, it was like watching the Hulk in action. Like, it was crazy. Like, he, and that, that's our first story. So when I started telling him about that, he's like, yo, nice to meet you, bro. I was like, well, actually, <laughs> we met, but you met my toilet first. But uh, but we met, and he's like, oh, that was you. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. And um, tell him what you said. What you, you said to me, like, what you were thinking when this happened. Okay, so, like, everything he's saying is very true. Um, I ate sushi with Grand Marnier, and that's okay. the reason... That's the reason why my stomach was messed up. I guess the bump, the ride was a little bumpy. Um, and when I got to his spot, I had to throw up. So when I threw up, like, I threw up, but my neck turned, like, rah! I went like that. <laughs> so I was aiming for the toilet, but I threw up on the toilet and then all on the, the bathroom yeah, curtains, all on the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, what? Like, how did this happen? Like, I've thrown it before, but it's never been like... So, at this point now, like... Decorated. At this point now, like, Decorated. for whatever reason, Mega Ran and whoever he was with didn't keep the cleaning products in the bathroom. 
or if they did, I didn't find them. So I was using toilet paper to try to clean it up. At least you were trying. I did try. Did, yeah. I didn't know he tried. I did try. I, I, I tried. I was like, yo, I'm because I was in there for a I while. And tell. if you hear me, if you hear me throw up and then I'm still in there, that means I'm trying. So like I was trying. <laughs> I was trying. Noted. I was trying to clean it up. Throw up, you better try. Yeah. So then oh, always try. try. So then, okay, so then, so then this is what happens next, <laughs> right? So then as I'm cleaning it up and like it it was so much and the tissue just wasn't where I said, you know. I mean, I said, enough of this. <laughs> enough of this. I'm done. I'm never going to see this person again. I'm going to fall asleep, wake up, give him a verse, and then I'm going to be done with it. And that is exactly what I did. I stood up. Star. I stood up, and it was throw up everywhere. I stood up, and I walked out, and that was it. You know, and I finished the verse, apparently, like he said I did. And said, then, yeah. um, yeah. apparently, I didn't even know it was Mega Ren until, you know what I'm saying, I found out on the first day of the tour. I was <laughs> laughing hysterically, be, and I apologized profusely because that's not me. You know, I don't like to, you know, disrespect anybody's home like that. So, you ain't got to worry. Like, this is wine. You ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here like, uh. uh, 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 uh. But yeah, no, uh, that, that was a true story, and you know, it, it was a great way to start the tour off. That story was incredible, you know. Absolutely. So that's how we started. Honestly, I think Alfred's the glue that put this tour together. Um, yes. Even with him being support on this act on this tour, he was uh, a fan of Mickey, who later became a friend. He was uh, we were both mutual fans of each other, who became friends, and he was the glue that put it all together for us. And um, he was just like, man, I want to get on the road with y'all. And I was like, well, we'll make it happen at some point. You know you know what you kind of do to the younger folks. You're like, yeah, yeah, it'll happen one day. <laughs> yeah, 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 calm down. And it's like, bah, 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 I want this tour. Let's do this tour. And I'm like, slow down. It's going to happen in due time. And uh, and it all and it happened like it was supposed to. And uh, and so here we are in the fam tour. Absolutely. Fam Who came tour. up with that name? Was that you, Alfred? Yeah. Alfred, Alfred came Alfred up with the did fam it. tour. Yeah. Yeah. Facts, it's Alfred, Alfred, Facts, Alfred, Mega. Mega. So like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I love a good acronym bar. Uh, yes. Yep. So now it's about time we close the IG app. And now the only way you're going to watch Ooh. the rest of this podcast, the rest of this interview with these young, incredibly talented gentlemen, Mickey Facts, Alfred Banks, Mega Ran, is go to the Swerve City podcast when it drops. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just a nice yeah. little side note. Tomorrow night we got Lucha House Party on the episode. So Lucha House Party. Oh, wow. Y'all gonna want to, y'all gonna want to watch that one. Y'all wanna want to sit in on that. So till then, we're gonna tune in tomorrow. But till then, Short City Podcast. Absolutely. YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe. And subscribe. Patreon. And Patreon. Subscribe. And all that. And all that. And then some. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till then, knock so out. Peace, chicken grease. And all yes. That. Now we get to get into the real gutter. Get to the, get to the gritty. Uh, Got to uh. subscribe though. Gotta subscribe. All right, man. Let me ask you a question, Banks, man. Let me ask you a question. So, who are some of your influences? So, people learn a little bit about you. Well, well, tell me who are some of your influences growing up coming from New Orleans. Um, well, my favorite rapper of all time is Lupe. Mm. Uh, Lupe Fiasco. Mm. Um, I hope it, nobody, nobody, just segue. I hope nobody debates that the first two albums are classics. I'm not, I'm not debating that with classics. anybody. First yeah, two, no. first two. I would say the third one is if he didn't rap on it. It's a uh, great, uh, it's a great produced record. Right, it just right, wasn't right. a loop ever. Right. Very but true. that's neither here nor there. Very true. Um, MF Doom, um, MF mm, Doom boys over there. Yeah, yeah the, uh, Charles Hamilton. He's always been one of my Charles favorites. Charles, mm, very underrated. Very underrated. Um, Busta Rhymes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, you know, yeah, that, that's pretty much my the guys who like inspired me to kind of want to want to do this. My older brother Landis, he was he almost signed the No Limit too back in like ninety eight, ninety nine. So he was an inspiration. He's the reason why I rap. Cause I watched him do. I used to steal his rhymes and reword it to try to rap. And my goal was to rap it to him. And if he didn't recognize the raps, then I won. It was like a weird. Ooh. I was like six or seven. Wow. So I would rewrite my brother's raps to him and stuff like that. So that's kind of what got me into it for sure. Mm. Absolutely, man. So so being in New Orleans, like you know, you have a your list of artists that you have are like from different different segways, different regions, different cultures. So was there anybody in New Orleans that was like another like a Master P or any like a Little Wayne around that time? Were they inf influences to you as well? Not really, to be honest, because. Um, I just I just kind of gravitated more to stuff that was 
um, I guess just outside the city, I always felt like a lot of the music was more geared just for the area. You know, so even though it went national, it was more geared to the to the to the area. And I always thought kind of outside the area. So that music didn't really influence me until I got older, and I was able to appreciate it from a different angle. You know what I mean? Um, plus, I was just very not closed minded, but I was very into what I was into during that time. But when I grew up and I started to appreciate my area a little bit more, especially now that I've traveled the world and things like that, I got to rep my city. So I had to kind of get familiar with what came out of my city um, and realize how legendary uh, the history of hip-hop in New Orleans really is. Uh, both, you know, No Limit with the independent hustle as well as Cash Money were going global. Um, they were the hottest thing on the planet at one point. Mm -hmm. It was just pretty much undeniable. Um, and that's from my hometown. We also invented jazz, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, bounce music and the bounce food. Music. So, like, the city is dope. And I'm proud to rep my city, you know what I'm saying, everywhere yeah, I, I go. Um, because, you know, when I say I'm from New Orleans, I have a reputation to uphold now. You know what I'm saying? People do have their expectations of what they think New Orleans is, and then I open my mouth and they go, oh. So, but I love repping New Orleans for sure, through and through. So, yeah. obviously, being in New Orleans, you know, and being with two boss men and these guys, would you think, that, did you start with like a stereotype saying, oh, okay, I'm from New Orleans, they wouldn't think I'd be like a lyricist. You said like, did you go through any stereotypes like that? For sure. Up with your music? Um, the very first time I opened for Facts in New York, um, I kind of went through that. That crowd was, it was packed, but that crowd was tough as, as, as nails. They were looking at me like, oh, you from New Orleans? You know what I mean? Mm. And then, but when I opened my mouth, and it was like, all right, well, we ain't going to show too much love, but it's nice, though. <laughs> um, keep it G. Like, they came, they came to see facts. It is what it is. But, like, for me, you know, uh, we just did a gig in Brooklyn. And, like, whenever I go up north, I always have a bit of a chip on my shoulder because I am from the south. And, you know, I'm the only person usually in these venues from the south. I have to represent my city. And I got to let cats know that I know how to rap, too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And everything don't sound like what you think it sounds like. Some of the best MCs come from the south. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. Um, and Juvie, I feel like, has always been an underrated rapper. I don't Talk know if anyone's it. paid attention, but this year he caught a wave. Like, if you go yeah. back and listen to the record he did with G-Eazy or the album mm -hmm. he did with Birdman, like, he's actually rhyming again. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, dope. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. 3D Not T, these guys and gals are, like, just 3D Not T uh, out rap Kendrick at, at a freestyle that's way. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? She from New Orleans. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. we got to, like, you know, chill out with the stereotypes. But I have that, that chip on my shoulder just because I want to show what time it is. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mickey, my brother. Smicky. Listen, man. The Enigma, man. This project, man. I just listened to it actually previously before you came, Same man. Same here. We both listening to listening party. And, mm. you know, tell me a little bit about that project, man. I know that's your newest release that you have out, man. Tell me a little bit about that project and how that came about. And also, segue to the Achievement Dope Record. Dope album. Thank you. Thank you. Love that, man. Um, Enigma. I was playing uh, Batman Arkham. Asylum? Not Asylum. Mm. Origins. Origins. Mm. Mm. And I was like, look at Riddler calling himself Enigma. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Wait, that's a dope word. I'm going <laughs> to call my project Enigma. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically I try to do um, 10 to 15 songs on a project. This is my first project that I did, just three songs. I just wanted to be quick. I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to focus more on the merchandise behind the project as opposed to the actual music and see, you know, if there would be a consumer base, you know, online for, you know, content if I created it. Um, so uh, aside from just the three songs that you heard, uh, which were pretty dope songs, if you ask me, everybody pretty much loved the project. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I wanted to kind of see where my consumer base was online uh, and focus on them for 2020 because, you know, I'm gearing up for a very, very big year. But uh, as far as that project goes, I just wanted to kind of talk uh, talk about my mind state. And when you watch the, the short film, you know, it starts in a closed hallway, which is the first song, Enigma, which is like just me t telling people about what I'm going through, you know what I'm saying, and how, you know, social media has pretty much changed the algorithm for entrepreneurs and you basically have to reinvest in, as opposed to um, you know letting it grow organically without having to spend money um, and then you know talking about having a child and things of that nature and, and then the second record motivated was really supposed to be a celebration you know what I'm saying of motivating yourself to get past whatever it was that I was feeling during the Enigma song and then once you get past that, you end up in the sky, which is the out the last song, Out the Sky, mm -hmm. which is more like, you know, a fly record, just talking that fly, fly talk. 
and um, it's three different vibes, but it's still all the same Mickey. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the, when the people heard that project, they was like, oh, this is, this is, you know, Mickey's expanding outside of just what he's done previously. Because a lot of times the, the previous stuff was was more hip hop stuff. This one I feel like is kind of you know venturing me into you know what I'm preparing for 2020, which is which is insane. You know, I got a lot of stuff prepared for 2020 and you know, this tour is is basically a a, a launch pad to go go to that next, you know, phase in my career, in my life as a newfound dad. I'll be a father in 2020. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And uh, you know, I'll be a homeowner in 2020. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. down in Florida, I'll be down here. Yo, Yo. you moving down there? I am. Yo. Miami, I'm moving to Miami. Okay. Word. So, okay. only a hop, skip, and a jump. Right. So, you know, I'm, you know, it's. There's a bullet train, too, so only 30 minutes. There's a what? what? There's a what? bullet train? Oh, man. Look, y'all don't know. Y'all don't read. We don't know. Well, yeah, well, come on, folks. Our, our city, come on, folks. Our city won for the. Uh, little get on the mic. Get on the mic. Oh, okay. Our city won for the little bullet train, where it's like from Orlando to Miami and vice versa. Oh, that's it's like dope. It's going to take 30 minutes now. That's crazy. So like, oh, four be hours. Down, yeah, I'm going to be that's down at fire. lunch. That's crazy. Yeah. That's dope, man. Oh, this changes everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I could come up here and do podcasts, interviews, studio stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, because this is something. Right, right. Because this is something. This is something. (laughs) This is something I've been playing. I've been planning pretty much for like the past year and a half now. So, you know, we get we're gearing up to kind of move down to Florida and be in nice weather all year round. You know, so it's very convenient. It's beautiful. Yeah, man. I love it down here already. So you know, that's that's yes. basically my spiel right there. Uh, you know, thinking about it, man. When we first uh, started talking about doing the uh, the Swerve City record, if you ever heard that, make sure you guys go to iTunes. The theme's on for the podcast. Sure. Things of that nature featuring Mega Ran, Mickey Fax. Mm-hmm. Make sure you guys go get that iTunes. Things of that nature. Stream the video directed by these guys right here. You know, they cut the video and everything, so, you know, Swerve City team, we made magic Just happen, man. this individual right here. Absolutely. Hey. And, and, um, crazy. Yeah. 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 This lady right here, without the braids, so. Yeah. 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 That was dope, man. Uh, that video we came out great. Ever. I wish you could have yeah. made. Uh, I know. I was, we was like, we was y'all like, like, y'all had so much fun on that. No, we had so much fun. Y'all dog. was wilding. And um, you know, first, first thing, I, do, I definitely want to comment on this. Salute to you for coming down. I remember when I first started talking to you, he was like, yeah, man, I got family here, and uh, I want to come down. And when we first started talking, uh, before the record got done, and then for you to say you finally coming down, I know that you could probably, uh, no, no, no disrespect to New York, but I know you probably tired, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the, I'm the designated driver in on this tour. You know what I'm saying? I love driving though, so I don't want that to be a slight to Alfred or Mega Ran. But um, yeah, I'm definitely tired. But you know, we got to do what we got to do. Absolutely, man. So you um, so you, are you miss New York? Or are you ready to just go? You ready to go? For I'm I I hate the cold weather. I hate snow. Yes. We get fly up there in the cold weather, but I can't. I can't do it no more. It's time to. It's time to leave. Right, so I need to be like. Yeah, I need to be in the heat, steez. I'm, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Absolutely, man. That's a great move, Mega Man. Yeah. One thing I want to talk to you about, man. Mega Man. That's hard. Mega Man. <laughs> Mega Man. Mega Man. I never heard of Mega Man before. Mega I never heard. Of him. What is that? I never heard. I don't know what that is. Uh, I got a shirt that says something like that. Something like that? Well, he might know. be blue or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Black guy. Black guy. Black nigga. That's a black guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. So, man, you know, first time I heard your music, man, honestly, I was um, about 2015, 16, mm-hmm. and I was like, yo, this dude's fire. And then I saw you started doing wrestling music. Oh, so it was before the wrestling joints. Before? Yeah, before. Okay, because when I started doing wrestling stuff, it was about 2015, 16. And then I heard of you through that. And uh, everybody's like, yo, have you heard of Montezzi? Theme song King, you heard of Montezzi? And I was like, I haven't heard of him. I got to look him up. And I looked him up. I was like, yo, he can rap. But anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember well, we, anyway, did the, we did the show at High Spots together. I wish they, you know, shot no disrespect to them, but I wish they would have gave us more time and we could have done more together. Yeah. Um, definitely inspiration. Because I knew when you first started 15, 16, and I heard about your music and what you've done. I was like, yo, that's a really creative lane. Mm-hmm. Because seeing the way you did it and, and the songs that you did and the way that you marketed it mm-hmm. was very, very strategic. And it was very different than what anybody else, you know, you could put a Stone Cold beat and rap to it. I mean, oh, yeah. but just the way you marketed it and the way you avenued yourself around the wrestlers and the way you marketed it was was perfect, man. Tell me a little bit about your inspiration behind that. Man, I've just, I've made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, and I think that's what's taught me how to do things the right way. It's just the messing up. 
Um, and like the internet, uh, I'm always telling Alfred, like the internet is like my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I know it, but every once in a while I'll step off and go to a new block and I'm like, oh, I don't know this. And, um, but, <laughs> but I noticed that a lot of the, the things can be applied, the things that you do or say in your neighborhood can be applied in somebody else's neighborhood. If you're Absolutely. a cool dude over here, you're a cool dude over there. So basically what I was doing with video games was making rap music based on my favorite games. I was sampling, whatever. And... I was trying to keep it away from the actual like people who made the games because I didn't want them to come at me and try to sue me or anything. But then I realized with the internet, it's like the world wide web. So like everybody can see all it, it. <laughs> all of it. So like you really can't hide anything if it's kind of pops. So then I just started to be like, you know what? Let me just go direct. And so I would hit up the game companies and be like, hey, you ain't got no rap song. What's up? You know, and and it, it just kind of happened the same way with wrestling where I was like, I would just start kind of working my way through the other channels. Like, all right, um, I used to go and get a lot of my information on wrestling from what culture? And I was like, well, what culture? There's no there's no hip hop representation in any way in what you're doing. Wouldn't it be cool if I gave y'all a song every week? We call it Monday Night Ran, mm. and it'll be a track about a wrestler. Fire. And they were what like, an idea. brilliant, <laughs> love it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, and it's like based on the same, you know, the the same concept that Kanye did on the Good Fridays and the yes. things like that. And Mickey, I will arguably say, did that first. But there's a lot of folks Smicky. who've done. I'm just saying. Mickey makes a trendsetter. Smicky. But, um, but you know, like weekly tracks became a thing, you know. And I was like, but it hasn't been done in wrestling. So when I started doing that, they were like, absolutely. Monday Night Ram, let's do it. And they started putting the tracks on their YouTube channel. I would get... You know, thousands of comments. Mostly people saying they hated it, but I, <laughs> but I appreciated that because it would be like people who have never heard me before. So then there'd be other people like, man, this is good. What are you talking about? People come in there, man, I just hate rap. And then like, oh, <laughs> yep. well, I gave it another gotta, listen, but I like it. Yeah, it's like these, the, there's yeah. nothing constructive. It's just being, I hate rap, so I know I'm gonna hate this. Sure. But, but yeah, like going through that and then um, actually meeting the what culture guys down at like a WrestleCon. Uh, I think it was in Dallas, and then just from there being asked again to like, oh, there's um Kaiju Big Battle happening. Would yeah. you like to perform during the intermission? I was like, well, absolutely. Like in the ring? Oh, snap! So I just saw it getting closer and closer. Then um a guy named um Justin from Sports Illustrated starts hitting me up like, yo, we want to write about your songs, and I'm like, what? Then this guy at Rolling Stone was like, yo, there's, you wrote a song about Brock Lesnar? Yeah. I was like, okay. So they wanted to write about it. So. I, I didn't necessarily do it for that reason, but I saw that I had found something that no one had ever done. Mm -hmm. And when you when you find a way and you mm -hmm. try to navigate through something like uncharted waters, it's like it's scary, but at the same time, like it could be very beneficial. And uh, and that was just me basically being like, yo, I've never seen anybody do this, and and be good at it. So instead of me waiting for a call from you know one of the big companies to go make their music, because they already got their guys that do that, mm -hmm. so I can find another way in you know through being creative and that's what it was for me Absolutely. that's the long answer to your question but you know what man a lot of people might not have known that you know and, yeah. how, and how we might have connected Thanks, man. You know, i've you never know. actually talked about that in, in yeah. the interview session. but um we like to open up that kind of information because there be, might be somebody out there that's like looking to start in a new lane in whatever mm -hmm. else a part of entertainment they're doing maybe trying to do the same thing yeah that you're doing with comedy yeah maybe trying to break into mixing another form of entertainment with Comics, video gaming, it's that's this is all knowledge absolutely. and information for other And it viewers. can always be applied. You're you're absolutely right. Like yes. what I did I took that from video games and you know, just a place that where I found that hip hop wasn't being represented in. Or if it was, it was in kind of a weird stereotypical yeah. Yeah. uneducated way. You know what I'm saying? So like where I saw it in wrestling or in video games. Like, oh, that's the hip hop guy. And okay, his hat's backwards and his pants are sagging. <laughs> God knows you know what I'm saying? Where's, where's his gun? You know what I yes. mean? The gun hanging out. You usually have guns. Yeah. Bring, yeah. bring his gun. Jabos. Got the Jabos. So yeah, when you and I saw like man, this 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 is an area that I love that I feel like they need to be educated more on the hip hop culture. Exactly. So this is a chance for me to show them that it's not it doesn't all sound this way it doesn't all look this way and uh and so that was cool and it just led to more and more cool opportunities um i gotta shout out austin creed xavier woods for being like the homie like from the beginning before anything yeah. popped off and like just looking out for me like and to the point where now if i meet 
wrestlers, they're like, oh, man, Wood's been talking about you. You're the wrestler guy, the rap guy. Oh, yeah, we know. And I'm like, what? You know? Mm-hmm. So I always appreciate him putting me over like that. And so they're aware of the GOAT, huh? Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's aware of the GOAT. You, know, aware of the goat, I, you should be aware of the GOAT <laughs> at this point, you know? But, um, but it helps a lot, man, you know, and just been... I've made a career out of making, you know, taking the 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 un like uncharted path, and um, and now it's fun to me. You know, like it used to be really scary, but now I always think about how can I do it differently? How can I put my spin on it? Like there's been a million people doing it their way, you know, but it's like there's only one you, you know. If, if anybody can get any advice from it, it's like you're yourself and you're the only one. So you got to just find your own way. That's right. Like a little snowflake. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is, you know, I could I could put this on because this is uh, going to be something. There is a special collaboration that I will say but won't say Ooh. with me, you, and another person. It's coming. It's coming. Mm-hmm. That's what she said. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might have put ear it's to happening. that record. You know, yeah, I was like, you put put ear on that. Yeah, okay. might have. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, it's kind of. Kind of fire, so you all hear that soon. Yeah, um, absolutely. Be patient. We won't be the ones to announce that one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't right. talk too much about it. Yeah, I can't say that too much. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just so more, people will know when they see it, they'll know, they'll know when they know when they know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you know, let's go. Let's get outside of music, man. All three of you guys. Let's start with you, Mickey. What is something you like to do outside of rap? Something you like to do your chill out time, or something your wind down time? Something you like to do? Um. Well, wind <laughs> down, down with the. Wind. I mean, <laughs> it's like it's a at this stage in the game. Um, it's really for me video games and um, reading. That's pretty much it. This year has been a little weak for gaming, in my opinion. No, yes. no offense. You're not wrong. Okay, okay, okay. No, good, 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 good. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I kind of went back to some classics this year. I, I played um, Spider-Man again. I played Batman, Arkham Knight again. I played Last of Us again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Read a couple books this year. And, you know, we just kind of preparing for this baby. So, like, those are the three things I kind of been focused on aside from music because music has pretty much taken over my life. Um, but I'm, I'm usually into more comics. That's why I'm glad we did a, a convention yesterday. So I picked up ten comics that I'm going to probably read on the road when we do this 10-hour drive. So, you know, aside from that, you know, that's that's basically it, just reading and gaming. You what are you reading on? What's your uh, go-to comic or character, oh, man. genre? Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, anything from the six, between the 60s and the 90s. I'm a Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, mm-hmm. uh, Mike Zeck, um, McFarlane, Starlin fan like you know what I'm saying so like I'm I'm stuck in that era you know I don't like the digitized comics anymore too much uh, I'm more of a penciler inker kind of guy so uh, I like the kind of cartoonish kind of comics I am a purist when it comes to comics yeah, that's why I, 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 you know, I, I know what I'm gonna say like, mm-hmm. I like I like a hardcover yeah I like a hardcover like Batman novel Right, yeah, gra- yeah. graphic novel. I can read the Joker, like a million Joker Killing comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, I ran, I ran, I ran down on y'all, y'all bookcase. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. that, you you know, as soon as I joints. seen it, you got some joints. In I there. got some stuff yeah. in there. Y'all got, y'all got the uh, Marvel masterpieces one through four, hey, Spider Man. Hey. I have yeah. one through eight. Uh, not to sh- <laughs> not to shut Yo, y'all down. <laughs> Uh, like you got four, I got one through eight. Got but see, the only reason the only reason why I got one through eight is because at one time I was traveling a lot, and I would go to every comic store in every city. One time when I was in England, I picked up uh, Marvel Masterworks like number two through like yeah. five for Spider Man. I just picked them all up, and I just read them on a the plane. It's a seven hour flight, yeah. so you know what I'm saying. Like that's the reason why I don't want y'all to take a slight to that. No, no. <laughs> but um, I have a lot of those. You know what I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the the so early. I can't stuff. move on to something until I finish the ones, and I'm like, I already got like four new ones up there, and right. I'm like, I don't, even, I shouldn't even got these because there's three. <laughs> so the bar, like I have like full, uh, pages folded over. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> going to get to this yeah. point, right? But I'm just like, oh man, a new game comes out or something like this. I gotta yeah. keep moving. Podcasting. I'm, a, I'm the same Something way. Happens. I'm the same way. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. And then yeah. Ghost Recon drops and just ruins it. Oh yeah. yeah. Glitchy, well, I'm, I'm glitchy so as hell, but I'm happy with it. But it's fun. It's a fun glitchy game. It's a it's a it's a fun, enjoyable 
time consuming bad game. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to have those though. Like yeah. it's like you need those. Not every game is going to be it's Red Dead Redemption. Good, terrible shooter. Agreed. Yeah. You need a good terrible game. Yeah, I'm like I, sometimes I want to fall through a mountain and just end up on like you know that's right. not fun. Right. 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 nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, like yo, how'd you get over there, homie? Uh, I went through the corner yeah. of this room and <laughs> Ubisoft took me the west of the way. Ubisoft. I went through the upside down. Ubisoft Ave. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. That's terrible. What about uh, what about you, Alfred? What are some of your outside hobbies? Um, I like to play basketball. Mm. Oh um, yes. Once upon a time, I wanted to go to the league. Um, I still got league. beef with facts. Cause <laughs> low key, we were the first time I toured with him was 2014, and there's a video. I was playing way light defense. I was playing really light defense. I don't know. I was playing light defense. I don't know. But he hit me with the in and out joint and went for the layup and he made it. the video all low key went viral. It was it was really so. So I, that's my moment. Yeah, he got him. But like I'm, I am really nice though with the ball. And I had on skinny jeans and Nike boots, so I wasn't really getting busy. Oh, oh, oh no! I had on Y threes, a sweatshirt, and Chill. denim. Chill. 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 Wow. My my reasons more. Uh, yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> I had I don't on know the, if that's I like can't I had on skinny jeans too. Right. I can't. I'm the inventor of them skinny jeans. Me, that's me. That's me. Well, you know I had them on. <laughs> nah, but like it's a low key flex for yeah, that's it. I mean it's true. Fits. But nah, man, like I, I play ball. I like to I wanted to go to the league at one point, so like I, I you know, I play ball. I like to ride my bike a lot. You know what I'm saying? I was telling them I don't really I don't really drive the car unless like I have to, you know. I really like because that's where I like I usually have like my, my phone meetings or I have like I write a rhyme while I listen me to too, somebody dude. send me a beat. I, I, I zone to the beat there, and mm-hmm. then I'll get home and write to it or however I do it. Mm-hmm. I like walking a lot, too. That's actually where I write my raps. So, like, uh. I, I I ride the bike listening to the beat, and then I just walk and write. Like, I'll, I've been known. People see me all the time. They honk the horn. I'm, I'll am just walk a block, like, seven times writing raps, mm-hmm. um, which is, yeah. So that's pretty dangerous, too, just because I'm kind of starting to get a name. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I got to watch my back. But. I'm in a good neighborhood though, so shouts to the Garden District. Um, mm-hmm. So that, and I, I play a little bit of video games. I don't play as much as I used to, but you know what I'm saying? Live 19 was a really good game. I, I still play that. Uh, I play uh, GTA 5 with the homies. I got my, my guys over at Fresh Music Group back in the city. I play GTA with them. We doing the survivals. We always, you know what I'm saying, smashing uh, mm-hmm. guys. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, that's really it, man. Hanging out with my dog. Um, I don't want to bring down the mood. I just found out my dog got cancer, man. I'm really upset about that. Oh, like my little Yorkie, oh, my man. Yeah, I, hate to, I don't want like do that, oh. but like it's my baby, it's man. Baby. So like I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna, we gonna we gonna hug it out, and it's gonna be love all the way through. So I cannot wait to get back to the crib. So I hang with my dog and I watch. Uh, my, my 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 thing is I like urban legends and myths and and stuff like that. So I'll, any TV show like there's a lot of shows from the early 2000s that talk about like urban legends, urban myths. They used to come on like TLC and stuff like that. Like I'm real big into that. I read books about like true like urban myths and. They do that um, like a li- lifetime. Like, yeah, no doubt. So like I, I I like I watch a lot. I read a lot of those books and I watch a lot of those TV shows. So that's really what I like to do outside of rap, man. Just be in my crib like eating pizza. Have you ever, and stuff. Been, to, have you ever been to Louisville? No, not yet. There's this, uh, this place called the uh, Seelbach uh, Hotel. Okay. And I think it was like built in like 1906 or something like that. Oh, what? It's where Al Capone used to do all of his deals. Oh, wow. In Louisville. I went there and I, it was had all the 1920s decor and everything. Some of the stuff was still exactly the same. That's fine. And we went oh, into the dope. Oak Room because the lady was like, oh, the party's upstairs. Yeah. And I ain't here no party. Yeah, the party's no. actually downstairs. She put us to the wrong spot. We oh. went upstairs and my friend Sue and I. She, we went into this room and I was like, I stopped right at the door and I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm. And I looked at Sue and she's like, you feel that? I was like, I do. Can we leave? Mm. <laughs> oh, you felt that? Yeah, and it was like, it was the room where he would have all his meetings and like there was like the little trap door that went down to the tunnels. And like I, I was like, that's yeah, good on all that. Let's go. Good on all that. I totally wow. feel. Yeah, that's what I like to do yeah. outside of the raps. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Me and Alistair, um, when we were at uh, New Orleans for Mania, went gotcha. to one of the voodoo shops gotcha. down there, mm. and like, um, the, 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 I was. Did I was, you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. Okay. Everybody, mostly everybody in our group enjoyed it and everything. Okay. But like, that's new to me. I don't I, like to. I don't like to burst bubbles, but that stuff. Okay, so New Orleans has a real history with like. Yes. But a lot of that stuff is like kind of layered on just for the sake of sure. tourism. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But you know, well, if, you, like if, me, if you jump like, into it and you really right. believe it, then yeah. you'll have a great time. But just mm-hmm. know that yeah. now there's the 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 Monteleone. 
don't know if y'all heard of the Hotel Monteleone mm-hmm. that's on Royal right. Street. I think I've stayed that there joint once. is haunted. Like it's right. low key really haunted. <laughs> yeah, like I think I stayed there. No once BS, time. it is actually haunted. Oh, wow. But that's like one of the few things oh, that's that lady's house. Yeah, uh Marie, Marie Laveau. Laveau. Yeah. Marie oh, Laveau. Oh yeah. Laveau. That's yeah. real. There's also a house yeah. right where I won't hold, but there's mm-hmm. another house where a lady used to like she used to have slaves and she would like low key experiment on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just yeah. do like anything you can imagine she right. would do to those people in like the eighteen hundred. Yeah, there's a house it's right on Royal Street. It's like a big, big Big so spot. Watch it's crazy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. actually true. That's where I was, yeah. yeah. A lot of those stories wow. usually be true. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sure. What about you, big uh, nigga? Me, man, it's weird. The whole line is blurred now because the stuff I do for fun is the stuff that has become like part of work. Mm. And part mm. of, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, Fire. You don't work then. You just have fun. So it's like right. a little bit or it's like work starts to, or fun still feels like work. You know what I mean? It's mm. a little bit of both. It's like okay, I like watching wrestling, but then if I'm doing a wrestling podcast, we gotta I gotta analyze it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I don't want to do that, so I started kind of <laughs> falling back. Video games is like everybody wants to know my opinion on a game, so I gotta talk about it, you know, or I'll stream it live and play on Twitch, and like have to give my full opinion on it and all that. And so, um, so it's gotten tough, but now yes, it's basically video games when I'm free. Um, I've gotten back into drawing. I used to draw as a oh, kid, didn't know that. and man, there's a um, there's a book. It kind of really changed my, my view on things. And the guy had it when I was on tour in Japan. There's this book he got on maybe Amazon. It says, like, 600 things to draw. And it's a book full of blank pages. And each page mm. is sectioned. And it's like, draw a car. And, you know, draw a flower. Draw a desk, you know. So every day, and we just, like, in our house now, we'd be like, all right, so every day I'm going to draw something. And I give it to my wife. And, like, you draw something. And she's like, I don't draw. I don't like to draw. I was like, just do it, Just do it. <laughs> you know? And so now when we have guests at the house, I give them the book to draw. So that's become my thing now. I'm, like, uh, back into drawing just like for fun. I like those with, like, writing prompts, I, too. I like yeah, that. I highly suggest that anybody, like, you're looking for, like, just a little bit of a brain or creative right. jolt, you know what I'm saying? Like, having something that, like, writing, too, is big on that. So I've been writing a book. So, again, it turns into work. So I'm, like... I just started jotting things down, like, you know, moments in my life. I think in Star Wars, they call them shatter points, like these moments that have changed your future based on what's happened. So I started writing a list of all the moments in my life that have affected my future. And uh, and then it became like a book. So I was like, all right, well, let me just keep writing. So again, it, it kind of turned into work for me. But um, but yeah, man, it's just, it's usually gaming. Drawing has become a, a cool thing for me. And um and now even recording is is like for fun, you know, sometimes, but it, of course, becomes work. Um, but like writing new songs and things like that, just trying to challenge myself. And and um, but yeah, when I want to just like veg out, it's usually on a game like Call of Duty or Overwatch. You know what I mean? Like I just want to sit down and just shoot and not think. Overwatch is fire, bro. It's so I can't fun. Get into the first person shooters. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I need narrative. I need some story. I, I hear need that. Character to. Like, I'd be feeling like that yeah. too. Sometimes, and sometimes. sometimes. But then there's games like you just want a mindless kind of little 15 yeah, minutes, yeah. shoot them up. That's the, it. I, I like that. I, see, I think the more the better for me. Mm-hmm. I want to be attached to it. I want to dress up like you for Halloween. That's why I want ah, to get it. Totally. Married. I get I that. Get I get that. Yeah, Overwatch doesn't have like Overwatch? a story, but um, oh. yeah, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare has a really dope story, and then you can jump into a lot of like just fun multiplayer modes. Yeah, it's a really good fun story. Yeah, I, I had enough. I was like, y'all bringing in jetpacks and people running up the wall. I don't want to see that. in 18 feet. I'm like, stop. No, we just want to shoot Everybody's people. too fast. Yeah. To call the halo. Call the you yeah. flying. Call. You yeah. flying with lasers. I'm trying to get my score streak. Sorry, out. I mean, like, right. I just running my on walls. So I can yeah. Like, Flipping. I, I, abandoned, I abandoned that because I was in the Black Ops, but then they started doing all that right. lasers and I'm like okay this it's is Halo it turned into Halo yeah. it did and then that's, I went, that's why I went over to Fallout and I had more fun oh, in Fallout okay mm. it's Modern Fallout. Warfare the new one is, is great it yeah. feels like the old ones it's regular old shooting combat it is. it's yeah. fun that's all I'm yeah. saying just give Get me it. a team death match and let that's me do my team thing team death match oh. Simple. 10 minutes Catch all all shoot it up yeah that's what I've been doing like, did you disengage the bomb? What? Huh? Who, there was a bomb? <laughs> I'm just trying to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There's a bomb. There's a terrorist attack over on Elm Street. Like, what? <laughs> I shoot you, you shoot me. This is mm-hmm. this paintball. This is what it is. That's that's digital that's paintball. Right. That's, that's all it. I want. Yep. That's all I'm here for. Uh, one quick uh, point also I want to bring up to you guys. All you guys is uh, excellent songwriters. You know, I'll start with you, uh, Bex. What is something 
that you want to see improve in music today? You as a pure writer, something in music you want to see improve. It could be hip hop or something you want to change if you had the power to change it. What you do is actually you have the power to. Um, I don't know. Just like a a care to be good. Mm. Like I just feel like because whatever you do, there's you know every rap can't be lyrical spirit. You know nobody wants to be in the club like uh metaphysical gravity. You know, nobody wants to hear that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, real th- I'm, well, we have these a lot of people don't worry. I won't say no. Gravity. But like, I just want people to care about s- rapping good. Like I've heard a lot of interviews of of guy or artists saying like you know. I just be in. The, I just be freestyling. Well, we just put it out. Like, I don't even care. I don't really be thinking about it. It'd be like, that's damn, crazy like, to me, bro. you know what I mean? It'd be like, <laughs> I didn't think that was a real thing. No, that's. I mean, dude, I, I won't now say. I see I'm it, not bro. gonna say names. There's no, no point. No. But like, just like I hear these interviews, I just be like, y'all like really don't care like at all. Like, you know, I know you're getting bazillions of bucks, but it's like, bro, you just don't care at all. Like, this thing changed your life. Now you went from this zero to a hundred. You getting all this money, seeing all the world. And you just don't care about the the culture, or you don't care about the craft at all. Like that, that would be the one thing I change, just to care. Because if 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 people are making music that's not as lyrical, but they're putting their all into it, I have no problem with that. Like period. Like do whatever come whatever comes out of your heart is how it was meant to be heard. Period. Mm-hmm. So I, that's why I don't critique people's music when they ask me to, because whatever, however it came out is how it's supposed to sound. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Who am I to tell you how to do your thing, right? Yeah. But just care. Just care enough to put you all into your trash. Like, whatever it is you <laughs> trash. Yeah, right. Absolutely. That's, yeah, so go with your heart. And I write this trash out. with a ribbon, man. True. Come on. You know what I mean? <laughs> put the joint right. on. Come on, man. I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, we have this discussion, me and Swords have discussion all the time. I feel like, uh, before I segue to Mickey and uh, ask him, I feel like music is like, us as hip-hop artists, we like, we get critiqued at a different, like, Sure. We've, we've seen we've seen Bruce Springsteen do this same act <laughs> since 1978. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, and nobody, you cares. know, when you see when you see uh, Aerosmith or Rolling Stones or stuff like that, these guys they're 80 years old and they go up there. People still go out. Nobody's mm-hmm. critiquing. I think they're going back onto it, actually. right? And they got mm-hmm. new music and stuff they do, and they do their classic do hits they? and stuff. Mm-hmm. And do they, no, got new music? Yeah, they actually do. And nobody's, you know, nobody said anything. But us, it's like we have to reinvent the wheel every show, every album. Mm-hmm. We have to reinvent ourselves each and every time. It, it's, it really sucks, actually. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like, you know, um, a lot, to to that point, someone to hear, like, someone that they, they hear is lyrical, they'll be like, oh, cool, you better be good, yeah, and then you rap, yeah, that was lyrical. Now, excuse me as I go listen to this not lyrical music, but you better be good, though. Yeah. 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 Yo, that's a no. great yeah. point. Yeah. Like, you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. You, yeah. you hey. It really spot. sucks, because it's like, <laughs> why I got to be dope, but your favorite artist isn't? Mm. Right, you don't, you're not gonna listen to my music anyway. They don't hold, yeah, they don't hold their favorites to the same standards they hold it's just the, the, the guy down the block. It's wild trash, the the field super trash. Mm. Every time, mm. every time. Huh. Huh. That's, That's a really kick. good point, Mickey. You being a, a vet and a lyrical boss smith yourself, like you, I'm pretty sure you could dissect someone's verse in like a second and be like, ah, oh, this is nah. It, it, it probably takes a lot to catch your ear. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be like, yeah, I'm not. A guy rapping his heart out. You're just like, I ain't feeling this. But tell me, <laughs> tell me, Dang. tell me a little bit. Tell me three hours to write this. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah, Turn that off. You know, because you, you, know, you, know, you are battle rap, you around a lot of different guys who are like really great at what they do, so your expectations are high. If you being around, if there's anything you could change, what would it be? Um, Contrary to popular, popular belief, I really like like reckless music. You know what I'm saying? Like I listen to lyrical stuff. But I'm also a fan of like reckless, wild, crazy music sometimes. But to answer your question, I would have more story based songs being created. I feel like, you know, when you consider someone like Slick Rick, his most two his two most popular records are stories. You know what I'm saying? Maybe three if you want to be honest. Like Children's Story, um, Mona Lisa, and Hey Young World. Like three songs that well two of them don't have a chorus like mm. well children's story doesn't have a chorus, have a chorus. uh mona lisa kind of has one technically but like he told stories and they were they were fire and i think when you listen to the 90s records the 80s records and even some 2000 records there were stories people were telling stories about either robin banks or things that they went through with their girl eminem told stories mm-hmm. they're not doing that anymore uh, and we were talking about this on the ride here. Like guys is just like throwing random lines together. It's just a, it's just that random. Cohesive. It's not cohesive. Um, yeah, and 
and it's just random, you know. And, I, and for me, I would personally like to hear more stories in in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Tell me a, a crazy like out the out the box story like that I could kind of dive into. You know and what I'm saying? Because yeah. like once again, I relate everything back to entertainment because same thing as in our wrestling. We're mm-hmm. just seeing a lot of action because TV. There's so much content. You can watch wrestling anywhere. I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with like how wrestling in the main in the mainstream is going right now. Mm-hmm. You can watch wrestling like six, seven days a week if you want. Literally, to. yeah. Literally, That's like true. it's 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 insane, wow. and not from the same company. You can go here. Mm-hmm. You can turn here, turn here, turn here. So there's so <laughs> much to try to capture people's attention because yeah. we don't want to lose that viewership because somebody else is going to be on the next channel. So wrestling is like Michael Bay movies at this point. It, it is. It's what? action. What's going to catch your attention the most? Like, like oh, look, I got to yeah. get back to here. Right. Same way, with, uh, you could say the same thing with comedy too. Yeah. Like, oh, mm. yeah, I don't really tell a story. Like, you're not really talking about yourself. You're just jokes, 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 yeah. jokes. jokes, jokes. Same with music. So let me, you're just like, what's the song about? Yeah, right. What what is your per, what is your purpose? What drives you as a comedian? What drives you as an entertainer? So I'm not like I haven't been a wrestling fan since like the '90s. Right. So I don't want to offend anybody. No. But I've been, you know, when you scroll down your timeline, and I was talking to Mega Ran about this. There's this guy who just has keeps his hands in his pants. Orange, Orange Cassidy. Cassidy. I wrestled him. <laughs> Yo, he's fly. Orange I he's love fly. him, dog. I love him. Yep. He's been he's been able to transcend. Yes. You know what I mean? The culture of wrestling where like people who don't watch will be like, Cassidy, yeah. dog, he's fly. this came through him. and who is dude, this dude is guy? Fly. He's fly. Now, <laughs> does he have a story behind him? He does. It's a if you go back into Jakara, mm-hmm. there's a whole origin to it, and that's why when you say like Uncharted gets over narrative, he's an over narrative character. Yeah. Huh. Why he's the way he is, why there's like a he has a hometown he comes from, their sisters, cousins, all yeah. that. It really gets I like didn't know that. super exactly. <laughs> wow. It gets super super in depth and stuff. But what captures you is just seeing him in hands in his pockets doing that. Mm-hmm. He's fire. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. It's just like he's swag smooth. on another level. Exactly. Yeah. He did he jumped over the, the rope one time, like did like a, like a plancha. I was like and then never, never never took, took his hands out, out the they, pocket. They were Scariest filming, thing I'd ever seen. They were filming a part, like a backstage segment, and I was just like, What is going on here? And they did it and Orange Cassidy doesn't even part of this whole thing. But they're tussling, tussling, and then boom, they open the door to the bathroom, and they yeah, it's just right there chilling, <laughs> loud as pop of the night. I uh, was like, like wow, okay, no, this and it was like, like now, mm, now the trick is, is <laughs> I always do the three month test, the the mm-hmm. three months. Mm-hmm. Are you still gonna get that same reaction three months from now? Mm-hmm. Are people still gonna be cut, tuned in for, or is it gonna be like, oh, we've been saying this for the same thing every couple of weeks? Mm-hmm. It's always so that. Kind so of how test. long has he been doing that for? Years. Long time, like, and he's. Maybe like, I oh. just saw him this year, and I'm yeah. blown away. Like, <laughs> and so that kind of speaks volumes because I is. know, I know the mass population probably hasn't seen him. Very true. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, I, I feel like he went viral mad times though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he has. You know, yeah, that, really, yo, that's cool. I saw. I, 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 I didn't know what to think. I was like, <laughs> like wow, crazy. Like, yeah. he's so fly, bro. Like, he's, he's a fly dude. He's very great, crazy. very good right. dude. It's amazing to see like surprisingly jump over that with no hands. Like Man. the sunglasses stay on, the hands of the body. He's like, what? How? What's going on? You know? Yeah. But he was, shout out to Orange Cassidy, man. Shout out to Orange Cassidy. I miss him. I haven't seen him in a while. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, you know, once again, man, episode 15, man, getting the signal to wrap it up. We thank you guys. For Wait, me. I want to talk about what I would change. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the next episode when you come back, right? My bad, my bad, man. Get, 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 get your round off, man. Get your round off, get your round off, man. Let me get your round off, brother. Get your round off, brother. Let me get mine in. Get your round off. What would you change? I've been holding this forever. Now it's now it's not. Talk about it. Now I got all the pressure for it to be good. Um. Yeah. Well, honestly. Gold rings. I just want. I just want artists to be, like, really, um. And okay with being different, you know what I mean. And it's that it sounds so simple, but like, you know, music and st- trends they come in waves. You know what I mean. It's like okay, here are all the guys with different colored hair, and here are all the guys that you know mumble a little bit. Here are the guys that rap on the trap beats, and you know. But I just want people to be okay with sounding completely different because even today, I think it it, it makes you stand out even more. Like people, I think it's like a Joe Budden line. Like fitting in is. Like, nowhere near as fun as standing out. You know what I'm saying? And thinking, like, yo, you can be so different. Now, 
And it's not even that different, but we were just talking about YB and Corday. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if y'all heard this kid. Yes. Fans. 19 Slings. years old raps Slings. his behind off. Yep. Like, there's no 19 year old rapping like this. So, him being really good at his craft is novel and new. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Which wait, is crazy. You're good? <laughs> like, wait, you're good at it? Wow. You know? And so now it becomes Mars. outstanding. And that's <laughs> not, you know, and it's like, wow, just because he decided to not do what the other 19 year olds were doing. Mm. And now he's able to stand out because of that. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just something to keep in mind. That, but And people always think, like, you can't shake the machine. Like, you can't break it. You can't reinvent the wheel. And it's like, you kind of can. I mean, Orange Kansas is proof. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. stuff like that can happen and happen on primetime right. TV. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can reinvent it, but I can put some rims on that. Yo, one. you can put some rims. You can make it fly. Out. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Gonna... seen this before. You got to make it fly. You know, they say it's nothing new under the sun, but I mean, I, I, I don't think that should stop people from trying. You, you know, know? Mega, that's a great point. One quick second, second <laughs> point. It's like, it's like watching Chris Jericho. It's like, he might not change anything, but just like how he cuts a promo. Or change a few lines. It's like he reinvented himself just in a minute. Mm -hmm. Just in a minute. Mm -hmm. Just that quick, you know? And he could have easily leaned on the past things that everybody knew. He could have easily leaned on any of his old Sticks. thing, the old sticks. But was like, nah, we'll just do something totally something different. different. And, like, that's why I think he's a goat to me, where I'm like, when you don't have to lean on what, you, what you've done in the past, you mm -hmm. can make, you can get anything over at this point. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Champagne is over. I love this guy. I'd, al scarf, you know? I'd also change rappers rapping over their vocals, but that's like hey. a whole nother. Yeah, oh, that's a whole yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not, no, so, not yeah. a fan of that. That's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah, that's thing. a whole nother. That's like a yeah. That's a, I'm talking about artist talk there, bro. I mean, but yeah, that's a whole. But nother. see, that's like inside baseball stuff. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like an actual rapper probably doesn't even, or like a fan of rap. I don't know if they really notice it, but like when we do it, they yeah, they don't care. Uh, I don't think a person in the crowd is like, man. I would have had a lot more fun. This, <laughs> They're just happy to see him on stage at this little Yachty that. show. If uh, there yeah. weren't vocals playing, nah, I don't mm. think they care. Honestly, like, concerts are just more you're paying at this point. You're just paying for the person to be. You know what I mean? Like for them to show up. Yeah, for them to base up. Countdown. One, two, two one, two, two three, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn up. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. You know, we thank you guys for pulling up. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have definitely have you guys Anytime. back, man. Alfred Banks, Mega Ran, Mickey Fax. Yeah, let I, them know where they can find you. Wait, wait, Smiggy. Oh, 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 man, wait, wait, wait. I just want to uh, put a formal in, put it out there. Thank you for allowing me to use your song. Hey, church. If you scared, go to church. church. That's yeah. my uh, that's my official like theme song for all my indie yeah. bookings. It not not the original. She did the remix the with remix Cisco with on Cisco it. In it. Shout out to Cisco for coming yeah. through and, and blessing it. Cisco. I, this, this Drew, Cisco. Drew Hill, Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's. Uh, <laughs> you got Cisco on the song? Yep. Yeah. Oh wow. Yo, he's, <laughs> they're like, you know what's crazy? You're friends with Cisco? We're like buddies. He's just. <laughs> he's a huge gamer, yo. Like that's how we met through gaming. Yo, you know who else is a gamer? Who? Neo. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> huh. And he's extremely good at Street Fighter. <laughs> what? Neo. He has, has, he, has he given you it work? Sound like he done gave you all them L's. Has Neo <laughs> given you work, Vax? He's been trying to. Fight me in Street Fighter for the past two years. He beat he beat Lupe. He, Wait, he what? beat Lupe. He beat Lupe. Oh, wow. He beat Boy Wonder, and he beat somebody else. And he's he's been trying. So just now, nice. I don't. I, I think he might have beat Just Blaze, but he's been trying to play me for like two years now. So he's legit nice. He's legit nice. Wow, that's tough. I would not have known that. See, Cisco can't beat me in no games. But <laughs> Cisco can't beat me in no games. Nah. Has a conversation of snow dogs ever come up with, between you and Cisco? No. Please. But it was on the TV. Like, one day I was talking to him, and I was like, I don't know if I should even mention this. Like, I don't know if it was like, I was like, maybe this is a weird moment for him. But I was like, yo. I'm watching you on TV right now. And he's like, nah, Snow Dogs. I was like, yep. I was like, yeah. He's like, ah, oh, man. I can't get past that movie. <laughs> no. Nah, can't no, you can't. <laughs> That's how you go. Matter of fact, that might be how you beat him in Street Fighter. He's like, ha! Yeah. What the? <laughs> no, no ball. That might be it. Yo. That's Neo, I'm though. Doing. Interesting stat. Yeah. Neo is that crazy. Neo's dope in Street Fighter. I'm, that is what's I'm low key kind of running from Neo, low key. Ah! <laughs> yeah, he's like, that man, dude, yeah, ducking you, that smoke. Ducking him. Ducking that smoke. I'm kind of ducking him. I'm waiting until I see him in person to play him. Because I don't want to I don't want to do it online and then he talk crazy online. I want to see him in person, <laughs> tape in person. it, and, and see what happens. Okay. 
That's dope, man. So, Mega Man, where everybody can follow you, man. Tell everybody your socials. Hey, so look, you go get music at MegaRamMusic.com. You go get merch at MegaRamMerch.com. And uh, you can go over to, like, my regular site, which is MegaRam.com. Or you can just add me on Twitter or Instagram at MegaRam. But it looks like Meg Ryan when you see it first. <laughs> like, as I've heard this probably <laughs> once a day in my life. Like, oh, I thought this is Meg. I thought this is Meg right. No, it doesn't. So it does resemble that at first because it's a capital M, capital R, but it's not. So yeah, go add me on those things. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Banks was good, man. Uh, for social media, on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Underdog Central. Um, that's that's the whole and it's spelled the exact way you spell it. No no crazy stuff. Underdog Central. Um, the website is underdogcentral.com. Um, or if you're old school, just go on Google and search Alfred Banks and some cool stuff will pop up. The the fact. Mickey. Yo, man. There's like 20 different sites out there, man. <laughs> but if you're on Instagram, M-I-C-K-E-Y dot F-A-C-T-Z, follow <laughs> me on there. Um, also, Mickey, uh, MickeyFacts.com if you want to pick up some merch, you want to get some new music, all of your content needs is there. Twitter.com forward slash Mickey Facts and Facebook.com backslash official Mickey Facts. I'm there. You could talk to me, DM me on any of the sites, and I will respond to you. That's a promise. Absolutely. You guys can follow me at TZ Scott, Instagram, Twitter, things of that nature. Uh, me and my bro over here, Swerve, uh, for Humble Beginners. The new project we're working on comes out April 4th, 2020. April 4th. Mm. April oh, 4th, wait, something else is happening around April 4th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Time, convenient, right? uh, that's mm. very hmm. convenient. A certain mania Absolutely. of the wrestling sort. I hope hmm. you see you there, brother. Me and, uh, <laughs> me and Sis over here got something extravagant going on. Come, uh, you know, she come host it or something, hmm. you know what I mean? Well, we'll need to talk. Mm. I'm down with that. So these cameras on. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's where you can find me for all information. Pass it over to my sis, Big Swole. You can find me on Twitter, Swole World, or Instagram, to Big Swole, Facebook, Big Swole, all that. There's only one Big Swole. Yeah. yeah. Big Swole. Mm, big Swole. Wait. Oh, she got oh, guns. Oh, wait, wait. She, she got Terminator oh, guns. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's pay content right there. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> You can That's find love me on right social media on Twitter, Swerve Confident, and on Instagram, Isaiah Swerve Scott. You know what it yeah, is, Swerve yeah. City Podcast. Subscribe to us on Swerve, on YouTube, SwerveCityPodcast.com, backslash. Oh, no, YouTube.com, backslash YouTube Swerve City Podcast. And the Patreon. And the Patreon. Hey, get on the Patreon, yeah. son. Yo, Mickey. Mickey. Also, a big it's shout Mickey. out to Around Seattle. We love you. Thank you for your support. For all this. Thank you for all the sponsorship. Yes. Word. Appreciate it. Couldn't do this without you. Mm -hmm. Love you. Don't think about you. Bring you up every episode. But you know what it is. Be yeah. confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Are you going to get a pop pop? Wow. Mm -hmm. Mickey. <laughs>